What's going on guys? Ryan O'Toole back here again giving you guys a top 10 list. Welcome to part 2 of the top 10 list of the end of the year. Two nights ago I did my top 10 favorite movies of 2016 and now we're doing the complete opposite. My top 10 worst favorite movies of 2016. This list is the fun one. This is the list where I can completely let out my anger, my frustration with these movies that came out this year. There were such disappointments, such atrocities that I can't wait to explore and rant on again. This is my worst favorite movies of the year. These are all the 10 movies I saw this year that I did not have a fun time watching, that I consider either really bad or just plain out disappointed. You might see a lot of movies on here that are not even close to bad, but just disappointing. Also, I have not seen every single shitty movie that has come out this year, either because why would I waste my time going to the theater to see every single one of these bad movies? which is just a waste of money and time, and I don't, I don't want to do that. And just like last time, I'll put every single movie I've seen this year in the description box so you can see what shitty movies I did not see this year. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into the top 10 list, I have six dishonorable mentions. These are movies that aren't even close to bad, just disappointing and not living up to my expectations. And they are Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Some of you might disagree with me on that one. Jason Bourne, Hail Caesar, Passengers, Snowden, and The Shallows. Now this is where the fun begins, guys. My top 10 worst favorite movies of 2016. <laughs> Starting off the list at number 10 is a shitty horror remake of a classic horror movie in the 90s, and that is Blair Witch. I must say, I was pretty excited to see this movie because of the positive reviews it was getting from Comic-Con, but when I saw this movie in September, I remember I really didn't like it. It had all of the cliche horror movie jump scares you could possibly imagine, where people were just saying really loud things up close to the camera. We're like, what's up? They're not scary. They're just stupid ass jump scares. And also the acting was really bad. None of these people are rememberable. And also it's a complete rehash of the Blair Witch Project that we've seen before. The only positive thing I can say is the ending was really entertaining. It was pretty original than what we got at the ending with the Blair Witch Project. It added some new elements, but all in all, this is a shitty remake that we didn't ask for, and I don't know why they made this. Oh my goodness, this was so boring. Coming in at number nine is the AI artificial intelligence thriller, Morgan. As I said, this movie is boring. It's a two and a half hour long AI movie with this girl named Morgan, played by Anya Taylor-Joy. She has a freak out, and now Kate Mara has to come in and try to fix the situation, and this movie was just really sloppy. There was tons of exposition. It was predictable as shit. None of these characters are likable or rememberable, and it had one of the stupidest endings most predictable endings of this year that really did not deliver. Some character dies in the stupidest way possible that I was just cringing so hard by. And this was directed by Ridley Scott's son, who has potential to be a great filmmaker. But here, he makes a completely mediocre movie that is completely forgettable. <laughs> Coming in at number 8 is, in my opinion, one of the worst comedies this year that's apparently based on a true story. That is Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. Some people actually really liked this movie and found it funny. I hated the shit out of this movie. I thought it wasn't funny, it was stupid, dumb, but Zac Efron and Adam Devine, they are likable, but 
they really didn't have much to play to. The thing I hated the most about this movie were the two girls played by Anna Kendrick and Aubrey Plaza. They were some of the most annoying characters this year. Their jokes were not funny. And they really didn't add much new to it. They were kind of idiots. Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates is just another stupid slapstick comedy that comes out in the summer that people found entertaining, but it wasn't entertaining to me. In conclusion, this movie needed to be in my top 10 list. See what I did there? Yep, I am never going back to see this movie. That's right, coming in at number 7, we have Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Oh my god, what was the point of this sequel? I mean, to be honest, I could give two shits about Jack Reacher. I didn't see the first movie, but some people were entertained by it. And I wanted to see this movie because of Tom Cruise and Colby Smulders. I love both of those action stars. But this movie was so bad. The action really wasn't that mind-blowing. The performances are really dull. No charisma or energy. No effort, I think, was put into it. The director, Edward Zwick, he directed The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. So I expect this to at least be fun. And it wasn't. Tom Cruise and Colby Smulders are trying, but the little girl in this movie is by far the most annoying, and stupid character I have seen this year. Like, why would you steal their credit card to order pizza? Who does that when the CIA is coming after you? Really? If you guys saw this movie, then you get my frustration. But I was just so cringeworthy at that part. And yeah, this movie sucked. I'll attack the turtles and the bear call me Crane. Some of you guys really like my Crane impression, which means my sixth movie on the list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. The first TMNT movie was really bad. It was stupid as shit, full of Michael Bay's humor and explosion extravaganza. And this movie's no different. It's even worse, in my opinion. The only good part about the movie were the Turtles' entertainment value. It was a lot better. But the acting is terrible. Megan Fox, Will Arnett, Stephen Amell from Arrow is completely bad as Casey Jones. Plus, you had three villains in this movie, which were shit. I mean, you had Shredder, who is humanized now. Really dumb. And then you have Bebop and Rocksteady, the most annoying characters in the film. And Krang, also, which I did an impression on, is so shoehorned in. The ending of this movie is cliche. It has the big beam in the sky, which we've seen in many movies today. And by the end of it, I just wanted to leave the theater because I was already done watching this movie. TMNT 2 Out of the Shadows is just a really dumb sequel that I will never see again. Coming in at number five is the best-selling book now being adapted into a film that I was really looking forward to and it disappointed me to shit. And that is The Girl on the Train. This was the one movie on this list that had huge potential. Book to movie adaptations have been on a roll. I mean, Gone Girl, The Martian. But this falls into Fifty Shades of Grey and Twilight as a really shitty book to movie adaptation. Emily Blunt is trying her best to save this movie from falling completely down and she can't even save it. And the other performances were really bad. Luke Evans, Rebecca Ferguson, Haley Bennett, Justin Thoreau, who are just one-dimensional, cliche, stupid characters. The story was shit, it was predictable, cliche, and it's ripping off many parts of Gone Girl. Then the climax of this movie is predictable from the start, and it completely failed. Uh, uh, excuse me, Roland. Uh, I don't want to be an uh, Independence Day resurgence uh, without Will Smith. Uh, 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 
Fine, I'll take a paycheck. <laughs> Guys, that was my Jeff Goldblum impression. Coming in at number four is Independence Day Resurgence. Oh my goodness, it's been 20 years and we're getting a sequel? Who even asked for this? Jeff Goldblum and Bill Pullman are the only original cast members returning, excluding Will Smith. And this movie needed Will Smith to be in it because this movie was full of new characters that were so terrible. Liam Hemsworth is just a boring, dull person. He's a terrible actor compared to his brother. And the other cast members, Will Smith's non-charismatic son, so stupid, the action was shit, the special effects were shit, and the climax of this movie is so bad, it pissed me off. It was trying to set up for a sequel that I'm hoping never gets made. Independence Day Resurgence is a moneymaker and a shit sequel. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I fell asleep watching this boring piece of shit. Coming in at number three is another book to movie adaptation movie, but it's a trilogy. And that movie is Inferno. Oh yeah, this movie's in my top three, because oh my god, this is hands down the most boring, confusing movie I have seen this year. And that is saying something. Ron Howard has decided to make this third movie because of Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and now this, it's a trilogy. And you have Tom Hanks returning as Robert Langdon, and Felicity Jones is also in it. And it's a two-hour long, boring-ass movie that I had no idea what was going on. Every cast member in this movie is so dull and bland. No energy. Tom Hanks is the only person who's trying to save this movie and try to give a good performance. The rest of this movie is so predictable and so boring. And yeah, Inferno is definitely my third. The top two movies, these two movies right here were so bad that I couldn't pick which one was my least favorite, but one of them exceeds over the other. And coming in at number two is the movie I have seen a couple days ago, which as I said, proves beyond belief, video game movies are complete trash. Number two, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed had so much potential to be a solid video game movie with Michael Fassbender, Marion Cotillard, and Jeremy Irons, but I was completely wrong. This movie is one of the worst video game movies ever made. Everything about this movie was so bad. The action, the acting, the script, the story, and the visuals, everything equaled into complete shit. This movie was so confusing. It's 95% exposition that makes no sense. I've never played these games, so of course I'm gonna be bored to shit by it, and I completely was. Here we are, guys. We are finally at number one. This is the movie right when I saw it. I completely regret going to see this movie, because when I first saw it, I came home and I was so mad I wasted my money seeing it. Coming in at number one is Nine Lives. Now for you guys who've been watching my channel for a long time now, you know I didn't do a review for this movie. I was just too pissed, shaken up about this movie. I tried to film my review, my camera wasn't working, and it was just a bad day overall. So I saw Nine Lives, and this movie is just one of the worst movies I've seen in a while. What's funny about having Kevin Spacey turn into a cat and talk like it? It's just really stupid. This movie is just so dumb. Nothing about this movie was funny, the acting was complete shit, and the story is supposed to be pandered to children. But 90% of this movie is nothing but adult, real-life business stuff. What kid would want to watch this movie? Here you have a great cast. I mean, you have Christopher Walken, Kevin Spacey, Jennifer Garner, Robbie Amell from The Flash, and they're all completely wasted, and 
Barry Sonnefeld directing it, the director of the Men in Black movies, making this piece of crap. The ending of this movie... What the heck was that? Nine Lives is easily my least favorite movie of the year. This movie just answered my question of how bad movies can get. This is the answer right here. All right, guys, those were my top 10 worst favorite movies of 2016. What did you guys think of my list? Do you like it or did you not? And also, what are your guys' top 10 worst favorite movies of the year? Let me know down below in the comments. This is officially my last video of 2016. I'm currently doing this on December 31st. Happy New Year to every single one of you guys. Thank you once again for watching all my videos this year. Tomorrow, January 1st, I'm going to be making my channel update for January, as well as my most anticipated movies for 2017. Look out for those videos. Thank you guys, as always, for watching this video. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. For the last time in 2016, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!